part of it on some level we're like, well, if there's not even if there's not a Super Bowl, it's gotta be a halftime show. Like, you know, so that was so that was my first my first my first comment was just like Football. with or without the Super Bowl, we're putting on a show at the time that the halftime show would be. With the weekend, for example, it was uh during the dress rehearsals where we saw it and we're like Okay, this is gonna work. Gives <laughs> a lot of this is like again, you're doing it all through Zoom, and so we had like PowerPoint slides of here's how the stage is gonna open up, and it's gonna have this room of mirrors with all these people, and there's gonna be, uh, you know, a thousand people with their heads wrapped walking around the field together, and we're like, sounds cool, but like until you actually see it, you're like, oh, okay, okay. I want to thank Verizon Media for being a proud supporter of Eureka. As an incubator of innovation and next-gen content, Verizon Media's trusted media ecosystem of premium brands like Yahoo and TechCrunch help consumers, advertisers, and media partners stay informed, entertained, and connected. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome Todd Kaplan to Eureka. Todd Kaplan is the Vice President of Marketing at Pepsi, where he oversees all brand creative, communications, and commercial execution across Pepsi, Diet Pepsi, and Pepsi Zero Sugar, while building a long-term strategy and new product innovation for the brand overall. Todd, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Happy I, to be here. I'm so lucky to be talking with you, yeah. but I always believe that everyone has a, uh, a vocal utterance that they have when they come up with a big idea. Maybe not everyone. <laughs> it just could be me. Yeah. Um, mine happens to be like a, a strong, like, yes, like that. But what's, what's, your, what's your vocal mm. utterance that you make when you come the up with a big utterance. idea? There's not like a, a moment where I'm actually saying it, but I would say for the most part, um, I'm big on like the mic drop. So I'll sometimes with Mike, when there's a really good meeting or the team, we're just like, that was, you know, people are just like, oh my God, that was awesome. I'll just be like, Pow. Like a little, like just, but it's, it's not just a mic drop, it's like an exploding mic drop. It's like tilt the head and you just gotta, <laughs> and then you just let that mic fall. I love so it. It's I love it. So a it's, it's a combination of a meme and a, and it's more of a gift. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's something that could absolutely be gift and should be circulated within the you know, just, community. <laughs> I got it. I love it. Just um, drop it like it's hot. That's my it. my other question that I, I like to open with because I uh, find that people tend to be. Um, creative in certain spaces. Yeah. Where are you most creative? Where do you find like, you know what? Oh, great idea. I'd say late at night. Um, I'm a bit of a night owl. A lot of mm -hmm. people don't know. Um, I'll stay up late just in general. I'm wired. I get my energy throughout the day. And by the end of the day, I'm just like, I can't even go to sleep <laughs> if I wanted to. And so I'll stay up. And what's nice is at night, once the rest of the world goes to sleep, people stop emailing me. No one's up oh, in my yeah. home. No, and I just... I get a little moment to just kind of reflect on a couple things here and there. And sometimes I can just, you know, make that extra step or extra connection, you know, in the middle of the night kind of thing. So uh, for me, that's a, it's a good kind of time to just kind of recalibrate and um, just kind of thinking through stuff. Yeah. Tell me about a Eureka moment, uh, any Eureka moment. What is a Eureka moment for you? Eureka moment. So it's interesting when you talk about the idea of a Eureka moment, because it's not like a... Um, it's not like from the movies, like he got Doc Brown falling off the toilet, hitting his head, and <laughs> oh my God, the flex capacitor. That's a Back to the Future yes, reference, the flex just capacitor. in case. Most uh, people do not know. watch the movie. Know. It's it's, it's it a one point twenty one gigawatt. Is that the, <laughs> yeah. One point twenty one gigawatts. One point twenty one gigawatts. But it's but it's not like there's this aha, you know, eureka moment. I'd say it's it's a little bit more iterative for me over time. You know, there's usually a moment where um, you're inspired by some sort of observation and insight, something that kind of says, you know what. There's got to be a better way. It's that infomercial moment. There's got to be a better way. <laughs> or there's some kind of way to, to solve it where my head kind of makes that connection or the click. But it's never in that moment the full end execution, right? There's always iterations building. How do you, okay, pressure testing. You got to weave it through the organization. And so it, it kind of then iterates over time. Mm. And then um, as you pressure test it with folks and you kind of build out from there, it, it kind of grows. So Yeah, as a brand marketer, it seems logical to me that... Um, there are some moments of like actual inspiration, but then you're like, well, I got to talk to like 74 people to get this through the system. <laughs> totally, <laughs> totally. Well, that, and that's one of the things too, is that it's not only just coming up with the idea or having the idea, it's how you protect the idea and fight for the idea um, mm. to 
get it executable and still make sure you're building it and making it better, but the core of the idea is still there, which is, you know, in a company the size of PepsiCo is something we, we do every day. Mm. I, I know that I've been using this phrase recently, but maybe it's not, it's, I don't know if it's right for the vernacular, but when did you uncover that you were an idea person? An idea person? Um, I'd say pretty fairly young. Um, you know, growing up, I was always very creative and, you know, into a variety of things and curious and doing fun things around the house, but I'd say it really accelerated when I was in college. Uh, I'd say I um, actually created two companies when I was an undergrad at Northwestern. In and, school? Well, I was in school, yeah, yeah. And so- You're like, I know, I was gonna do this college. Well, it wasn't like, oh, I, let's come out <laughs> But it's always, it was, to the point is like, you know, um, creativity is really about seeing and connecting ideas. Right. Right, and this idea of being more entrepreneurial is about like making them happen. And I got a little bit yeah. of that knack as well of just like a little what scrappy. Was the problem you were, what's the problem so, you saw in college? Yeah, like, yeah. I can't find a, you know. Well, so I'm probably gonna date myself here, but back in the day at colleges, um, well, there, when well, there was two things. Colleges you'd when, go there was, to. when there was colleges you go to, there was, there was two <laughs> things, well, two, two things were the issues, I would say. College campuses used to just have paper plastered all over oh, the right. freaking grants. The, the, and so people would, you pull yeah. the tab off, hey, you know, come to the whatever show on Thursday night, come see the acapella group. And and um, every Sunday morning at our student center, people would get there at like 6 a.m. and fight for the, the prime Ooh, wall real like estate to put the their posters. Height. They'd pre-tape their posters. <laughs> and it was like the stupidest, like most analog, lamest marketing kind of construct but, but it, it was it worked on the campus because right. people were walking by you'd see it oh i see the paper on the ground and um clearly not an effective way to market anything if you're trying to get people to come to your event and so i said all right there's this need for better marketing for the student groups on campus because they're not marketers they're you know improv people did you say that word though did you think there's need for better marketing or is there there's or there's got to be a better way more of a thing it, it kind of is yeah. yeah like there's there's a need like the marketing on campus, it's wasteful, it's stressful, it sucks, and it's not effective. Right. And at the same time, me and other people, we need marketing experience. So why oh, don't you hire us to you become your on-campus? You were using it as a solution to be, I needed some experience. You came up with a problem that you could solve. It's, a, a, it's, a, it's a, so connecting those dots, we created this, this group called Ad Shop. Uh, and it was basically the first student-run ad agency in the country. And we were profiled by the Chicago Sun-Times. And we ended wow. up, we started getting one student group and got many, many others after that. And then we eventually expanded into local businesses in Evanston because then it was like, hey, college kids, you help me target the market there. And before we knew it, we had this huge group. It was one of the biggest groups that we had a ton of great experience. We were running out and uh, oh it was goodness. a lot of fun. So I'm going to set the stage. This is 2020. <laughs> crappiest years of our lives. You're the head of Pepsi and you yeah. are responsible for the halftime show. And you think to yourself, you know, I need to figure out how to give humans who haven't seen live anything forever yeah. something to look forward to. Yeah. Just describe if you can <laughs> the pressure it's, that you're feeling to come up with that that moment. It's it's so funny because it's a it was a daunting feeling, <laughs> right? I mean, I gotta so even in a non-pandemic normal year, the Pepsi Super Bowl halftime show, it is the single most talked about moment every year, the single most viewed moment every year. It is the highest rated part of the Super Bowl, right? And so the, the stakes are already high. Then you throw in... No, let's just say, the stakes are not... That is the highest It's the stakes. highest. That's it's the it. highest stakes poker you got. It's the Super Bowl that's the pinnacle correct, of the Super Bowl. Correct, correct. And it's, you know, and everyone's a critic. Music, there, there's always, you know, whatever. Now for a brand like Pepsi, which again, we love the idea of being the most talked about brand, sure. trying to connect with culture, all that stuff. It's a great tool for us to, to play yeah. with all. Um, but this year, as you said, um, you know, there's a pandemic. Yes, just the season, up. you know, we're in the midst of like the NFL season's about to start and is starting in anyway. We don't even know, um, are the teams, are they going to finish the season? A lot of people are like, hey, the teams are getting COVID. They're delaying the schedule. Is there going to be a Super Bowl? Ugh. And so part of it on some level, we're like, well, if there's not, even if there's not a Super Bowl, gotta be a halftime show like you know so that was so that was my first my first my first comment was just like, like you know, with football. with or without the super bowl we're putting on a show at the time that the halftime show would be even if there was no no halftime no no super bowl now it might be in a studio or something sure. COVID. we didn't know how crazy the world would be or what you know and so we're like we gotta we gotta do something so we gotta start to sign who are we gonna get how are we gonna do that and mm. um without revealing anything delicate what yeah. timeline does that happen in prior to the super bowl just so i know this this past year a, was um a lot with. of the a lot of these discussions were in um you know well we it's it's funny let me go back yeah. even further please j-lo and shakira yes okay that was your so first big it was, was, was the first the first big uh 
one we did with Rock Nation, we brought in Jay-Z and Rock Nation. Yeah. And the first one, we really started this new form of partnerships, really take it to the next level. J-Lo and Shakira, we had just come off the February Super Bowl in yeah. Miami. J-Lo and Shakira just tore down the house. Crushed Unbelievable, right. like everything. We set new records for a brand. All this kind of stuff was great. We said, you know what? We normally are so late on the planning, the process and all this. Let's get ahead of it this year. And so in March, one of my, my no very- good deed, no, but you'll, no good deed, No good You will actually love it. My <laughs> very last meeting right before the pandemic and you had to go home yes. was with Rock Nation and NFL in the city here when we were saying we were kicking off the planning for the next year. And we said, here's who it should be. Here's what we're going to do. Right. Blah, blah, blah. And then literally as I was walking back from the meeting, I got the text alert saying it's a global pandemic. Every the home. NBA season is right. canceled. The You know, and it's just like, uh, <laughs> okay. So then once we all figured all that's what was going on, we kind of reemerged a little bit after and said, okay, we need to revisit. Like we can't just do the same old thing. We got to figure out a new way, right? Especially because... Um, it was very clear, like people were not going to get live music for yeah. any time wow. soon. We had just come off producing um, this event, One World Together at Home with Global Citizen right. we had done, which was, which was excellent, but was like people in their living rooms and all that. And it was a it felt intimate, intimate, but know? it's not when you think of Super Bowl and right. halftime. And so in the seasons, once we got enough to know the season's happening and right. the Super Bowl's happening, we, we believe the Super Bowl's happening, the NFL's telling us that, we continued to kind of kick off the planning with, uh, with the whole team. And... Um, and what we found is when we announced the weekend, um, the reception was <sighs> through the roof. Yeah. You know, and it's not that he's not the biggest star out there. He's very well known and, very well known. and, and phenomenal and, and, and in what nice he does. And a age range for like, a great, young people kind totally, of excited about it. Totally. But the reception online and through the earned media, like we actually got more buzz in the announcement than we did for the entire J-Lo and Shakira Super Bowl <laughs> overall. And we're just like, oh my God, when you start reading through all the social sentiment, you're just like, People are just like, yes, I have a live music event to look forward to. I'm looking for like live music, live music. Like that's just, mm. it can't, they're anticipating and needing just something to look forward to. And this type of, this is the the one live music event that the whole world typically gets behind in one, one moment together right. of unity. And so we said, hey, that was kind of the eureka moment where you would say, um, well, what if, what if we actually flipped it on its head? And instead of saying, wait till the Super Bowl to get access and get closer to the artists and all that. Why don't we take the 12 minutes of the halftime show and turn it into six weeks leading up to the halftime mm. show and really start in January on the NFL playoffs and start talking to consumers about, you know, what is he doing and how's he getting ready and get behind the scenes and like really get behind oh, the scenes access to how it was going. So we, we put a code on Pepsi cans, a QR code on every Pepsi can in the market that would link to this, uh, uh, deep kind of consumer experience that would have, you know, augmented reality and behind the scenes footage and how he's preparing and all mm. that kind of stuff, a lot of stuff leading up into the day that we would accompany with a TV spot on air and things sure. leveraging blinding lights, which was the song. We ended up pulling it off and it was a phenomenal show. We were very excited with it. And and overall, we actually, it was the most successful we've ever had. We had, um, we look at this metric called share of voice on Pepsi. Mm -hmm. We had 52% share of voice, which means of all conversations online about brands on Super Bowl Sunday. Think of, you know, from <laughs> adage, like all the, all the brands competing for 30 right. seconds, this and that, trying to shout their thing. Of any conversation on brands on Super Bowl Sunday online, 52% of them were about Pepsi. Wow. The hashtag Pepsi halftime was used more than hashtag Super Bowl. <laughs> Seriously. And that, that's, that's like, I mean, so it's like, wow. we were just like, holy hell, this is crazy. And yeah. a lot of it was the anticipation, the hype, everything we'd built up to that. And we You're saying the that. eureka there is that it wasn't just the week nailing the, that it was going to be the weekend, uh, but it was the... The, sh the pivot from the reframe um, yeah. of it's not just a show that 14 minutes uh, show, but it's it was the length of the time before as well as the totally we had we had normally for the halftime show, we would have a, a Pepsi spot on air and yeah. we would normally just wait till game day and cool. cool press. Hey, here it is. Here's the show. And we have these 12 minutes that we crush it and we do a lot online with it as mm -hmm. well. But um, we said, you know what, like, let's spread that out. And just what we found is just people were just needing and wanting to kind of get closer to the music. What was your most favorite halftime show that you like? I'd love this to beat this one. There's a lot. I mean, it's, um, I quite liked, you know, the, the first one I ever worked on when I was in the, um, 
You've been there for a while. I've yeah. been at Pepsi for a while, uh, but I was leading our sports marketing efforts at the time. Right. Uh, right when we had signed the halftime deal was um, Beyonce's very first one where the lights went out in yeah. New Orleans. So that <laughs> one amazing Super Bowl was experience. another great Super Bowl experience. Oreo won that getting, year, though, if I'm not mistaken. That's correct. That's correct. <laughs> but, we, um, but that was a good one. I'd say also I liked the one um, in San Francisco that was... Uh, Coldplay, Bruno Mars, yes, and Beyonce really kind of awesome. surprise performance. That was the 50th uh, Super Bowl, I think. Yes. Um, you know, but they're they're all great. I mean, the J Lo and Shakira one. I you know they they all the weekend. I mean, I, I like all. Yeah, I'll, I'll share mine. Like I I have um, a big Prince fan, yes. but when it rained. Oh, and he had the guitar. And the guitar and the and the, and the solo uh, during Purple Rain. I was like, it's it was like he coordinated with God. To yeah. make the rain come for the moment, it was just like this is yep. this is another level. Also, yeah. it was Prince, so I was like, that was amazing. For, for, as a, as a as a person of my age, yeah, I quite like the um, Prince one too. Um, uh, so like. there's a great Igor Stravinsky quote, which I love, which is um, actually I'm not positive. It's, I believe it's Igor Stravinsky, but I've, I've googled it. And I'm like, I can't yeah. find him ever saying this. But the the quote is, um, within the greatest limitations comes the most creativity. Yeah, and oh, I, I totally. am a big believer in like, show me the size of the box, and I can have. That. I am a huge believer in um, constraints fuel creativity, right? In the sense that it's, you know, I almost tell my team a lot of times around like, pretend you had no budget. How hey. would you approach this project? As opposed to like, oh, well, do this, you know? And so it's it's actually, I think, a liberating thing of right. where um, you see a lot of people in high stress situations, whether it's procrastinating on writing an essay in college to make sure it, you're going to make it happen in, in under pressure versus... You know, it's, it's the more you kind of constrain, the more you necessity, you know, mm. the things kind of come out to the surface a little bit easier, at least for me. So but no, you don't know what the weekend, what the weekend, uh, you know, you have to push and you have your leadership asking you, how's it going? You're like, it is great. Totally. It's going to be great. Well, the, the best thing we do with our leadership on the halftime show. So years ago, there used to be leaks every year where someone would know who it was and people would say, oh, someone says the halftime right. show. So to eliminate leaks, we actually... Don't even tell our leadership who is the halftime show until the day before the announcement. And so we'll do a lot of the planning and then we'll finally tell them and then we'll show that, you know, so it's a lot of times it's it's to kind of control and, mm. and uh, uh, to, to gain consensus and bleak. Yeah, we'll put, a, we'll put a sheet in front of our leadership and say, if there's anybody on this page of like 30, 40 names that you do not like, now's your chance to tell us. So just going backwards, right? You have that 30 or 40 names that goes in front of the leadership and like, the weekends in there in thirty or forty names. Yeah, when the when leadership and you decided that it was the weekend, or how did it, how did how does that decision happen? So I, if I can explore that. Yeah, there's a lot of um, a lot of stakeholders uh, in partnership, like with anything, and so there's no unilateral decision. But I'd say Rock Nation and Jay Z himself is very he has a very strong say in that. Um, the NFL and Pepsi have probably what I would say um, veto the, power. Veto power <laughs> or the right of saying like or not. Or, in some regard, and then um, that's that's kind of the crew, and we have a pretty tight crew between the NFL, Rock Nation, and Pepsi, and how we do that, and then we kind of build from there. When you bring in the network, when you bring in all the people who are producing the show, and all that stuff, so it uh, is, is there back channel that, that happens, like where Jay Z's on the phone with you, like so it's I'm not in the weekend. <laughs> no, it's not that. It's not like we're like we're tight, and Jay's like, hey, what do you think about? Me? I've got a couple ideas. It's um, it's usually we've it's been vetted already. You know, right. uh, is because I let I, I like to zoom in on those, those that moment where the I, and it goes from a a thought to being vocalized. Hi there, I'm here with my friend and colleague, Jen Whalen, who is the head of B2B marketing for Verizon Media. Jen, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. I'm thrilled to be here with you, Josh. Okay, Jen, I have a question for you. Can you tell me about a magical moment of inspiration that you might have had that, that I don't know, changed your life forever? A eureka moment, for example. I love these moments. I have a few that come to, to mind, one in particular. Um, I was not a fast learner. I did not know it in the moment that I was having a eureka moment. There might have even been some tears. But in hindsight, you know, 25 years later, uh, maybe pushing 30 years later, um, I definitely have realized uh, that I did have a eureka moment, which I have now coined the phone booth moment. Oh, you've even branded it. I've named it. I'm a marketer. Come on now. 
I was 20, 21 years old, and I had left Alaska where all my family was, and I decided that with my baby, I was a very young single mom, I was going to take a baby, and I was going to go put myself through college at the University of Oregon. Um, Now, let's mark these words. I did not know anybody in the state of Oregon, and I was very proud and very independent. That was a badge that I was wearing. And when I got to Eugene, I got my apartment keys and I said, of course I have everything under control. What I did not have under control was getting electricity. So here I am at four o'clock in the afternoon with a baby and no power and no heat. So I put my baby in the car, I drove to the local grocery store and I went into a phone booth. And for those of you who are watching the show, and don't know what a phone booth is. Look- yes, there was life pre-Google. No cell phones. This was pre-mobile phone. No interwebs. No Googling. So I go into the phone booth with my baby and I start looking up. Uh, well, first of all, the phone booth has a phone book that hangs down because you don't want no one wants to steal the phone book. Yeah. And so I'm holding my baby on one hip and I've got my knee up and I'm flipping through the phone booth, your pa- phone book pages, L for lights. No go. P for power, E for electricity. Now, let me be clear here. I was a 4.0 student. There should not be any judgment happening right now. I was desperate to figure out how to get electricity into my apartment. So lo and behold, I just like, oh, I got to call home. I, and I, this was killing me. Put my quarters in, call my parents in Alaska. They answer on speakerphone because they love me a lot. Oh, how was the trip? How was the flight? How's the baby? How's the apartment? My mom would not stop talking until I said, well, everything's great, except I just don't quite know how to get electricity. My mom loses her mind, loses her mind. I get a lecture that lasts a long time about how I was the best waitress in Juneau, Alaska. Why am I doing this crazy thing about college? That's like an enormous stretch for you. Very high stretch. And my dad finally cuts in and says, hey, kiddo. Maybe, you know, I I don't know, but maybe just flip to the front, like maybe check out the front cover, like just give it a chance. So lo and behold, that's where the municipality stuff is. And I was like, I found it. Hey, only have so many quarters, got to go. Click and hang up on my parents and I call, I get myself some power and I leave the phone booth with a sense of, yes, I can do this. I will not quit. I learn the lesson that you have to ask for help. Sometimes you got to ask the right people. You got to lean into people who love you. You have to lean into people who care about you and lean into people who may know the answers and can help guide you a little bit, but don't give up. And if it's hard, that's okay. Yeah. I I just, I just love that your dad didn't tell you the answer. He let you discover it. It's like a, it's like a gift that will, that will stick with you forever, uh, which is totally awesome. Jen, Thank you so much for joining me on the show. You were just terrific. I just loved hearing that story. Oh, it's always a pleasure to chat with you. I am so excited to hear all the Eureka moments from all of your guests. I am thrilled you're doing this. I'm super excited. It is my honor to be here. So thank you. I have six questions that I tend to end with, Todd. Yeah. Um, Tell me your favorite curse word. (laughs) <laughs> um, that you, this is, I ripped off obviously from another interview series, but I happen to love it. What's your favorite Ooh. curse word? Fuck. Um, <laughs> you know, it's gotta be, it's, it's gotta be that. It's, Just a, very it's a very good... versatile word. Cause like, here's the thing, cursing and uh, the, you know, there's a whole thing on uh, was it Netflix that was talking about yes. cursing and all that, right? The, uh, the, yeah. there's, a, there's the history. There's a whole the show on it and all right. that, but like, listen, cursing, um, it, there's a lot of curse words that are borderline. Are they even curse words anymore? Because they're just so, so in the vernacular. Common in the vernacular, and I think, I think that's you know, as you get to the F word, that's a, that's a very versatile word. You can you can it's make it about it can be negative. it can be emphatic like right. I'm it's fucking awesome, I'm fucking excited, um, or you could be like fuck. Or, you know, there's definitely catchphrases I have that people really? say, but they're a, not a like, but they're not like my my team always tease me. I always say like a hundred percent, you know, or I'll be you know I'll be like. They'll be like, oh, that's a great. I'm like, oh, 100%, you know, or like, or the, you know, the, the mic drop thing. <laughs> the mic you know? drop explosion, reverse The mic, mic drop, drop explosion yes. is something that you'll see a lot. Um, <laughs> you know, there's a couple other ones. Big idea. I'm like, that's a big idea. That's a big, big idea. What's your move at a cocktail party? So you're, you're, you go to a cocktail party <laughs> and you're like, 
I do you like to go to cocktail parties? Do you not like to go? To, yeah. What's your? What's well, I haven't your, been to a cocktail party I know, right. since the when pandemic. When cocktails start again, it's been the saddest your, thing doing these like happy hours over like, Zoom. It's so nice to see you all, not seeing in, you. Sitting in front of my screen, <laughs> like, hey. You usually want to know where the restroom is. That's that's no, the escape class. Where's be the like, I, oh, I need I'll to be right the back. The other thing, you know, another interesting insight into me is that it depends on the type of cocktail party, but like past hors d'oeuvres, just so you know. Yeah. Um, Skip. I ha- no. No, you, you go. I deep. have never <laughs> met an hors d'oeuvre I didn't like. So I am. Um, so one of my old bosses used to call me um, Rusty. You know Brad Pitt's character in Ocean's yes. Eleven, how he's always holding Eating food. <laughs> I literally, if you just walked past me right now with like, like a plate of like pigs in a blanket, <laughs> wedi- <laughs> at a wedding cocktail hour, I am like dangerously like. I, I always befriend the hors d'oeuvres people. They come to me first out of the kitchen. They're like, that guy's going to take two skewers. That guy's got a shrimp cocktail coming his way, whatever. I, Todd, I just love this conversation. I thought it was terrific. You gave me such insight both into PepsiCo as yes. well as what you've done with Pepsi. Yes. I just want to thank you for, for doing everything. This is great. Thank you so much. This, is, uh, this has been awesome. A lot of fun, Josh. So appreciate it. I'm so glad. Thank you, Todd.